Well, we have a special guest today. Many of you know the, the name Nick Vujicic, uh, a man who's uh, got an incredible testimony. And uh, I don't use this word loosely, but I would say a great anointing of God on his life. And so we're, uh, we're thrilled to have Nick with us. And so let me say a prayer. We're going to see a video, and then Nick's going to come out. Let's pray. Well, Lord Jesus, you said that wherever two or three gather in your name, you're there. We meet the requirement. You keep your promises. So, Lord, be in our midst. Uh, use your servant. Uh, stir us up by your spirit. Show us your light, your truth, your goodness. Amen. I was born in Melbourne, Australia, 1982, and my parents had no idea that I was going to be born without arms or legs. I was the only one that I ever saw without limbs. My faith in Jesus Christ was sealed after seven years of wondering why, God, I was born this way. Uh, he answered me very clearly through John chapter 9. And I gave my life to Jesus at 15 after reading about how he came across a man who was born blind. And I'm like, hey, hold on a second. This looks interesting. <laughs> and no one knew why he was born that way. I'm like, perfect. So I read on and in verse 3 of the ninth chapter, Jesus said, it was done so that the works of God would be revealed through him. And I'm like, wow, God, if you had a plan for the blind man, you do have a plan for me. And that was the beginning of my personal relationship with Jesus. Youth groups were starting to call me. Churches were starting to call me. Opportunities were opening up everywhere for me to share my testimony. I was speaking in front of 300 sophomore public high school students. Three minutes into it, half the girls were crying. One girl in the middle of the room started weeping. She put up her hand and she said, I'm so sorry to interrupt, but can I come up there and give you a hug? In front of everyone, she came and she hugged me. She cried on my shoulder and whispered in my ear, no one's ever told me that they love me. No one's ever told me that I'm beautiful the way that I am. I couldn't believe it, it changed my life. That was when I knew. I was called to be a worldwide evangelist. Today, do not leave here unchanged. Leave here unchanged. You don't know what God can do with your broken pieces until you give God your broken pieces. And I want you to know when you fall down, God's grace is sufficient. God's hand will come down and pick you up. And give you the strength to get back up. By the grace of God, we have seen face to face a half a million souls say yes to Jesus and be plugged into a local church. As crazy as it sounds, our goal at Life Without Limbs Ministry is to preach to every single soul on the planet, seven billion people. We believe that this goal is possible as the Holy Spirit is gathering an army and building up supporters to send us and accomplish this mission. Good morning, Westmont. How you doing? Did you enjoy that video? Yes. Good, good, good. It's basically a quick highlight of uh, what's been happening in the ministry. If you can turn me down just a little bit. Sorry, Brad. Perfect. I want to thank BP for the invitation here. Uh, I love you, BP. Peace. How you doing? Um, I got two toes, so God can always allow me to do the peace sign. Peace. All right? So... Um, 
BP and I, we, uh, we don't go way back, but I'm looking forward to going way forward. And um, I'm really, really excited with uh, what's happening here in the area. Uh, when we got this invitation, we were quite excited to say yes. So thank you for having me here. Really hope that our time together encourages you, inspires you, and challenges you in, in a positive way with Jesus Christ. The title today is Nothing Sweeter Than Jesus. Nothing sweeter than Jesus. If I had an American accent, I would say, nothing sweeter than Jesus. <laughs> so I'm from Australia. I moved here about 10 years ago. I'm 33 years old. I'm pretty sure for my age. And uh, I travel around the world and I share my testimony and I preach the gospel. And uh, as God has just been so faithful and merciful, um, you know, he, he just loves you. He, he has a plan for you. And I'm glad to see at least one person, two people ready to take notes. And we're going to be basically sharing a couple scriptures during my testimony that has helped me to really transform my thinking. Because faith comes by what? Hearing of the word. If you don't hear the word as much as someone else hears the word, then the chances are your faith is not going to grow as much. It is the understanding that all scripture is God breathed. This is a book. It has papers and a cover and text. Yet it's a different kind of book. It is breathed by God. And it's interesting how we can choose to believe whether that is just another book, if this is just another philosophy. There are many people who can say, well, I only believe it's a book because it's this, this, and this, and this, and I don't believe that God can really speak to me in a relevant way because I don't understand this, and I don't understand this, and this, and this, and this. Now, I'm not here to be a scholar and a philosopher to tell you why you need to believe in Jesus, but let me tell you, there's nothing sweeter than him. And I want to share with you the experiences that I've had in my life. And the first of all, um, I just want to open up before I forget. It's the most important thing um, here for, for me to remember. Uh, at the beginning of my speech, I always want to share a photo. We've got a couple photos of my family, okay? I want you to see my family. That is Kiyoshi. He is now, um, if we don't, I don't know if we could kill the lights for a second. His name's Kiyoshi. Thank you. Perfect. And um, he's three years old next week. And um, he's already taller than me. See that? <laughs> and the next photo, I think we've got another photo. So that's Kiyoshi, a little younger. But that's, um, that's Kane, and my wife. She's half Japanese, half Mexican, Japsican. <laughs> okay, and we've been married for four years, coming up next week as well. The next photo is little Dayan. So he, in that photo, he's two months. He's now five months old. So I wanted you to see this because I tell you, when I... Thank you so much, Brad. Um, oh, yeah, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> he's so adorable. And um, unfortunately, he was in urgent care last night. So um, he's got... How do you... Croup, croup, crop, croup, whatever that thing is. Gosh, it's horrible. Um, but yeah, so anyway, so otherwise they would have been here, so because um, we're an hour away. But I, I'll tell you right now, seeing my boys and and knowing who my wife is, um, literally, it's dreams in my heart, in my mind that I never thought possible. The first verse I want you to sort of jot down, just the reference of is. I'm going to give you in the end about 8 to 10 scriptures that you can walk away with. The first one is Philippians chapter 4 verse 13. You know that quite well, right? For I can do how many things? All. How many things? All. All right, good. Ephesians chapter 3. I'm pretty sure it's verse 20. I want to make sure. That's why I opened it up here. Yeah, Ephesians 3.20, it says, But now to him who can do exceedingly abundantly more than you can ever ask, imagine, or attain. Ephesians 3.20. He can do exceedingly abundantly more than you can ever, 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 ever ask, imagine, or hold. You've only got two hands, right? And so I don't have any. So you got two more than me. And when you hold on to something and you close your hand, it causes you to hold on to whatever you've got in the palm of your hand. However, if you have two hands 
closed, holding on to what you have, there is absolutely no way that you can handle more. The question is, what sweet things do you have and what sweetie things are you missing out on? What are you holding on to? Who are you and what do you want? Because my God, our God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob can do exceedingly abundantly more than you can ever ask, imagine, or attain. And when I was a kid going to elementary school, I actually was, you know, bullied a little bit. And my brother and sister have arms and legs. There's no uh, medical reason why I was born this way. My parents don't know I was born this way. My parents don't know. My doctors don't know. Lady Gaga don't know why I was born this way. <laughs> and, you know, and I love it when people come up to me, especially little kids, and they're like, what happened? And I go up to them and I say, cigarettes, right? <laughs> But it was difficult because, you know, I don't know why I was born this way and, and I didn't want to go to school because I get bullied and teased and you know the acronym for FEAR, right? F-E-A-R, false evidence appearing real, right? You've got now the acronym though for faith, F-A-I-T-H, full assurance in the heart. It's an assurance in the heart that no matter what you see, no matter what you feel, that you can have faith, that God is faithful, that even when you cannot walk, he'll carry you. That's where God's grace is sufficient. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9 to 13. Romans, I'm going to give you all the verses up front, so then you don't have to think that you have to take any more notes. Romans 8, 28. All things come together for the good for those who love him. Philippians 4, verse 6 and 7. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, with prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God, and let his Peace, guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Three more verses. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. Those who wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like eagles. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11 to 14a. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Then you will call upon me, come and pray to me, and I will... Listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord. I love that. That's enough verses. I think you got it. But what I want you to understand is God is real. And when you have a real relationship with him, the sweetness becomes real. There are so many artificial sweetnesses out there. There are so many counterfeits of different things. Anybody have a real Gucci watch? Gucci's not even in I here now, right? I don't even care for watches. It never helped me. I don't need a wristwatch. <laughs> but let me tell you something. You know that the Gucci watch is not a real Gucci if it's only five bucks. I mean, it looks like Gucci. <laughs> But you know, it ain't Gucci, right? It's funny when you, in life, you, you, you look at these things and the opportunities and decisions that you have to make. And number one, you have to make a lot of decisions and choices. And then you have some fears about your future, just like I had. I never thought that I would ever be able to be married. I thought even if I got married, I can't even hold my wife's hand. I thought even if I had kids, I can't even hold my kids when they're crying. I couldn't even brush my teeth, take myself to the restroom as a little kid. Talk about a lack of dignity that I realized as a teenager. And I'm thinking, you know what? As a kid, I'm just going to be a burden to my parents. I can't do anything for them. I can't do anything for myself. I don't think I'm going to get a job. I can't even keep up in college. No way can I keep up with anyone. Why? Because at the time, I didn't know that I'd be able to type 43 words a minute on a normal computer with my big toe and 53 words a minute after two cups of coffee. <laughs> And what I didn't know was the big picture that God could see that I couldn't see. Let me tell you a funny story about not seeing the full picture. I was one day in a car. I'm in the front seat of the car and we're at the traffic lights and this car comes up next to us and this girl's looking at me. So I'm looking at her. She's looking at me. I'm looking at her. She's looking at me. I'm looking at her. And all she sees is my head from the side. So she doesn't see the rest of my body. So I'm thinking... I'm going to freak you out. 
So just imagine all you see is my head. I grab this seatbelt in my mouth so I can loosen it like this and then I can freely move, okay? <laughs> now she's looking at me, why are you eating your seatbelt? I'm thinking this is going to be so good. <laughs> so imagine all you see is my head, I just did this. <laughs> And she was like, so good. I love pulling pranks, man. It's the best. If you don't believe me, it's on YouTube. I actually pulled a prank on a commercial airline flight. I dressed up as the pilot. Seriously, my friend was the pilot, and we did it. It took four months to set up. Like, the red tape in American Airlines, crazy. But... We did it, and we, and we got hidden cameras and everything. It was the funniest thing. It's on YouTube. They were like, <laughs> like, really? Like, I, I was like, yeah, my name is Nick Vujicic. I'm your captain today. <laughs> and I had my jacket, my hat, and they're like, how do you fly the plane? Is that like with some brainwave technology? <laughs> and like, the kids are like so excited. The parents are freaking out. They're like, did you know about this? No, I didn't know about this. <laughs> And everyone's seated, and I walk on the plane just like this, and you look down the aisle, and all the heads are like... <laughs> and I got the microphone, and I said, Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for boarding so fast. And they're like, Oh, my gosh! <laughs> Tell you, some people nearly came to Jesus right there and then. <laughs> Exceedingly, abundantly, more. I don't need to hold my wife's hand. I need to hold her heart. I don't need to hold my kids when they're crying because when Kiyoshi is crying, he comes and holds me. Did I know that that would happen? No way, dude. I'm like, how am I going to, I'm thinking, how am I going to, you know, even propose to my wife? I even need help with the ring. No, nah, man, we put the ring in a cream puff. She fed me the cream puff. I finished the cream puff without choking on the ring. I said, baby, let me kiss your hand. And so I was kissing her left hand and I went down on her ring finger. She thought I was getting kinky or something. <laughs> She's like, what are you doing? I didn't lay a hand on her or anything, I promise, all right? Now pull back, she sees the ring on her, on her finger and I said, baby, I love you, I want to spend the rest of my life with you, will you please marry me? And she cried for two minutes and I said, so? <laughs> and she said, yes, and we got married six months later. But what's cool was, the moment I knew who she was, for me, was the day in one of my worst states that I've ever been in. You see, when I was 28 years old, I had a burnout. Someone stole $50,000 from me. I had four projects going on at the same time. I had a cash flow crisis. I had to cancel all the projects. And then I needed money from my parents as a 28-year-old to keep me afloat just for a little bit. And that tapped into my eight-year-old depression of feeling like I'm going to be a burden to my parents. So I actually had 30 days of panic attacks. My hair was falling out, couldn't eat, couldn't sleep. Yeah, this strong evangelist who's traveled around the world had panic attacks. You see my foot? Ups and downs, ups and downs, ups and downs. <laughs> and when I told my wife, babe, I lost all my money. She said, that's okay, I'll get a nursing job and support the both of us. We were only dating or courting for three months. That's when I knew I found myself a wife. For as long as you look for a girlfriend, you're going to find a girlfriend. For as long as you look for a boyfriend, you're going to find a boyfriend. But man, if you ain't ready to actually be looking for a husband, then why bother looking for a boyfriend? Because the sweeter things are in Jesus. If I want my wife to be a virgin, get ready for you to be a virgin. What goes around comes around. That's what the world says. God says what you reap is what you will sow. When you actually honor God with the sweeter things, the things that you're holding on to. Hey, sex before marriage, who cares, dude? Seriously. God cares. I can look my son in the eyes when he's 15 years old and say, I waited for your mother. 
When you do it God's way, when you make decisions and choices in your life, there uh, obviously there is healing, reconciliation, yes. But I'm going to tell it again to you many, many times this morning. The sweetness of Jesus becomes real when you have a real relationship with Jesus. I tell middle schoolers all the time, don't tell me you're a Christian at middle school because you raise your hands at, at you know, church on Sunday and then you tease each other on Monday. Gossip, is it really that bad? Well, why are you holding on to gossip? Why don't you let that go? Why, because someone gossips about you that we could do another subtweet about them, anonymous now stuff and all these things and dividing, why, why do we do this as humans? Because we don't want people to put us down or we have these choices and people's opinions on us and circumstances around us. I want to ask you, who are you and what do you want? I want the sweetest, sweetest, sweetest things. I want the exceedingly, abundantly more. Because I had no idea that God could ever use a man without arms and legs to be his hands and feet. I knew that the God of the Bible could do miracles. So guess what I did as a six-year-old? I prayed for mine. I have a pair of shoes in my closet in case he says yes. But why did I go and buy it? I'll tell you why. Because I've seen 13 miracles with my own eyes. I've seen the spiritual realm. You can't tell me that there are no demonic forces out there. You can't tell me that it's just science and physics. You can't because I've actually seen it. In my own back, a medically unexplainable healing of my vertebrae. It was hollowing out into fluid. Irreversible, incurable, change it up. I've seen deaf people hearing, blind people seeing, lame people walking, crooked backs come straight. I've seen it. You can't tell me that I haven't seen it. But I'm not here to talk to you about that. It's understanding that, first of all, the sweeter things of Jesus is way more than you can ever ask, imagine, or attain in even this sense. My dad has stage 4 pancreatic cancer. The first doctor told him he should have been dead three months ago. He's now on a decline. Do you think that I've prayed for God to heal my dad of cancer? Yes or no? Yes. Can God do it? Yes. Will God do it? I don't know. But I know that if God lets him to die with cancer, he's going home. If God doesn't allow him to die of cancer, God's going to allow him to die of old age, a car crash, a plane crash, whatever else you want. He's going to allow everyone to die eventually because we're actually citizens of heaven passing through. My dad started three churches. I'm not a Christian because I'm a PK, let me tell you that. Let me tell you that. But I'll tell you right now, my dad knows that if he dies, he wins. If he gets healed, he wins. And I prayed for arms and legs and I'm still winning. I won because the battle has been done. The devil has nothing on Jesus. The devil can't create. He actually can't create people. God is the creator, the only creator. He can mimic. He can give you stuff to let you hold in your hands that you actually miss out on what God actually wants to give you. But he can't create. And his days are numbered. And I can't wait for heaven. Not because of arms and legs. I mean, I'd love to have arms and legs right now. Man, I'd like to get on a bike, smash into a pole and break your leg. That would be cool. <laughs> but arms and legs are going to give me arthritis later on anyway. But let me tell you, when I go to heaven, there are a couple things that I'm going to be looking forward to in heaven. And one of them is seeing someone there. And it's not who you think. Let me tell you a story. I was speaking in Southern California in 2004. I saw a man hold up a little boy with no arms and no legs. And he had a little foot just like me. He was like my mini me, all right? He looked at me, I looked at him. I'm like, man, I want to wrestle with you later on. I got the father to bring him up on the table and he's looking up at me, 19 month old little Daniel. I'm looking down at him. I can't give him a high five, so I gave him a low two. <laughs> and when he smiled, everyone cried. 
I saw my mom hug his mom and I saw my dad hug his dad. And I had all these flashbacks of when I was a kid. The, the lies and the fear is taking me away from the faith. Do you see the Bible over there? The Bible ain't going to move for the next couple minutes, probably on its own, ever actually. If you leave the Bible there, it ain't going to move. But what happens is, we walk away from it. Nick, you're not good enough. When I was a kid, when I was eight years old, Nick, you're just a burden to your family. You're not going to go to college. You're not going to be independent. You're alone. No one understands you. You're just a loner. You're worthless, and you're just a burden. Why don't you just give up? You'll never get married. There's nothing to live for, and there is no God. And at age 10, I actually attempted suicide in my bathtub, and I'm here today by the grace of God, but it's only because I had parents as well who loved me by the grace of God. Can you imagine what I would have missed out on? My boys, my wife. I never knew that God would send me around the world to 800 cities, 57 countries, meet 13 presidents, have 2 million books translated in 41 languages, have 300 million people hear my testimony on YouTube, preach the gospel on national Russian TV for 20 minutes last April, to then get a call from Putin, say I want to meet you next April. So I'm seeing Putin, my 14th president. <laughs> I'm going to ask him to start a national day of prayer in Russia. That video, seven billion people, the consecutive three years after that video was done, literally. 300 million people in 2013 heard the gospel of Jesus. 2014, 200 million heard the gospel of Jesus. Last year, 100 million people have heard the gospel of Jesus. God has exceedingly, abundantly more than you can ever ask, imagine, or attain. But this one little boy with no arms and legs, when I hugged his mom and I said, when he goes to school, I will come to his school. And if he has bullies at his school, I will go in my wheelchair and run them all over. <laughs> I didn't say that, but I did go there about four years ago. And I talked about a simple message of love. And now Daniel, Daniel, he swims like me because he's seen videos of me swimming. And now he's not getting bullied. Now he's not getting teased. I know that if I was 10 years old and actually suicidal, if I just met someone 20 years older than me who's married, who's got kids, and he's got a smile in his face, and he's a speaker, then man, if God's got a plan for Uncle Nick, then God's got a plan for me. And I'm here today to tell you this. I don't know your pain. I don't see your pain. But I'll tell you right now, I believe it's worse being in a broken home than having no arms and legs. And there are times in life where we're going for some sweet things that actually are not as sweet as Jesus. Money, drugs, sex, alcohol, pornography, fame and fortune, even addiction to academics. And this idea that when you get a CEO position in that big company, well then you're okay. No, you're not. No, you're not. Money can't do anything for you. Sex, you can have sex with anyone you want as many times you want and you can still wonder do they actually love you. Drugs, hey man, smoke a bit of this. Yeah, smoke a little bit of that. Yeah, why not, right? Let's start with marijuana and let's go to heroin and cocaine. Big deal, let's get drunk every Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Why not? Everyone else around me is doing it. It might seem sweet for a second, but buddy, it's poison. God has something better. And if God can use a man without arms and legs to be his hands and feet, that God can use you. Young woman, young man, you are the generation that actually changed this world. We are only years away from 400 million Christians standing up on one Facebook platform to give a dollar a day to end world hunger. Zuckerberg gave $45 billion away last year. He can't do that this year because he doesn't have 90 billion bucks. 
But what if 400 million college students, high school students, middle school students all around the world said, you know what, we're going to be the Christians that Jesus wants us to be and we're actually going to do the impossible because what? God can do exceedingly abundantly more than you can ever ask, imagine or attain. If you had a wish list, if you had a genie in a bottle, would one of your top ten say, let's try and alleviate the suffering of the world? Well, I'm not going to believe that that's you unless you actually have restrained yourself from bringing any suffering here. Until you're ready to change this school, why do you think I believe you when you say you want to change the world? I want to do something with you this morning that no one's ever done, and I need your trust and I need your cooperation. It's going to take three minutes. Everyone say three minutes. I've done this in 200 venues, and I want to do it here, just so you understand that you can make a difference. In a moment, I'm going to get you to do an anonymous survey for me. From here. And the way we're going to do this, I'm going to ask you four questions. And I don't want your neighbor or the person behind you or in front of you to know your answer, okay? So the way that we're going to do this in a moment, I'm going to get you to actually bow your heads in a second. And you're going to put your hand up in the air. And when you put your hand up nice and high in the air, your hand needs to be open. And as I ask you these four questions, if your answer is a yes to some of these questions as I ask them, then put your hand in a fist. Does that make sense? Good. Everyone right now, sit up nice and straight in your seat. Bow your heads. Put your hand up nice and high. Do not rest your elbow on a knee because I need to see all your hands. Okay, hands nice and open. Put your hand in a fist if you've ever thought of committing suicide. Go. Open your hand. Put your hand if you've actually tried to commit suicide. Go. Open your hand. Put your hand in a fist if you actually tried to commit suicide because of pressure in your life. Open your hand. Put your hand in a fist if you've actually tried to commit suicide because of bullying that you're experiencing at this college. Go. Open your hand. I'm going to ask it one more time. Put your hand in fist. You've actually tried to commit suicide because of bullying in this college. Go. Open your hand. Okay, put your hands down. Just for the record, I couldn't see one hand. I tried. I may not have seen you. But I want to tell you, first of all, that's where I want to, st that's where I want to start. Your Love for each other as a school is where this begins. You don't know who's going through what, right? So out of how many students do we have in this auditorium? Approximately. 900. 900? Okay, let's say 900. Now let's go to the first question. The first question was to put your hand in a fist if you've actually thought of committing suicide. To my surprise, 50%. Literally. Two out of five, three out of five. Four out of ten, some six out of ten. I don't know who they are. But man, I want to tell you, first of all, that I love every single one of you, and don't give up. Don't give up. There are about, out of 900, 25 of you who've actually tried to commit suicide. And 10 of which because of pressure. Now, I don't know what pressure that is, but it's pressure. I want to make sure that every single day that you are alive, that you make it count and you take the sweeter choices of life that God has given you. Because I want to ask you right now, if this was your last 30 seconds to breathe, how would you be remembered? Were you a giver, encourager, or were you a taker? Were you a bitter person? Did you encourage people to, in your 
actions in your life? Did you help them or did you discourage them? Did you take that time to say, hey, how are you doing? And they look to the ground and say, oh, you know, I'm okay. No, look at me. How are you doing? We are here for one another. This is the ministry. This is Jesus. This is the light. And I want to tell you, I'm sure that if any one of us was was at a road and there was a three-year-old kid in the middle of the street sitting down playing with rocks on the street and a bus was coming and the bus was about to kill him, you have plenty of time to get up off your seat, go save that kid. Will you save that kid? Of course you will. You don't know his name, you're going to save that kid. You don't know his religion, you're going to save that kid. You don't know his sexual orientation, you're going to save that kid. Because why? We are the light and love in the bridge to Jesus Christ we need to understand that it's not just doing what we think we need to achieve or have some people think that things get easier when you get married Uh uh-uh go talk to some married people (laughs) some single people are like oh I'm not happy but I know I'm going to be happy when I get married dude if you ain't happy single you ain't going to be happy married can you hear an amen yeah, you guys already know it, right? You got to talk. That. So what do you want? How do you act? Who are you? Make today count. Dream big and never give up. If you've ever thought of suicidal thoughts, please talk to somebody. We are here for you. We're going to have pastors praying for you. If you want to pray later to the side, that's fine. But we want you to know that this school is here for you. God loves you. Does God love my son even if my son becomes a janitor? Yeah. Do you think I'm going to love my son even though if he one day wanted to be a CEO and becomes a janitor at a college? Yeah. You want to know why? Because a janitor changed my life. He was the first guy who said, hey, Nick, you're going to be a speaker. And I said, Mr. Arnold, you're a crazy old man. (laughs) I said, what am I going to speak about? He said, you're going to share your story. I said, I don't have a story. He says, yes, you do. I said, no, I don't. He said, Nick, you know what? You're here in high school. you got to go speak at that spiritual group. I'm like, no way am I doing that. No way. I'm not speaking to those 10 people. I'm not going to go to the Christian nerd section. (laughs) And for three months, he would chase after me and say, Nick, go speak, go speak, go speak. And I said, no, 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 no. And finally, he twisted my arm. I said, yes. (laughs) And I went there and I spoke for a couple minutes and I saw a girl crying. I'm like, are you okay? She said, ah. I said, what's wrong? She said, nothing. I said, why are you crying? She said, I was just touched. And I'm thinking, who touched her? (laughs) God cannot move if you have no faith. He can. But man, when you have that faith and that power in understanding that today you got to make it count, you are a world changer. Honey, girls, you are a princess, you are royalty, your dad is the king of kings and lord of lords. Guys, you don't need bigger biceps, my biceps were so big they fell off, you understand me? (laughs) You don't need to say the F word. Why do you need to say the F word? You think that that's okay? Let it go. Open your hand and let's see, let's see what words God fills your mouth with. I believe in you because God has a plan for you. It's got nothing to do with my ability, amen? It's God. Watch this. The word disabled. D-I-S-A-B-L. E-D. When you walk by faith and not by sight and you go by faith, you put a G-O in front of the word disabled and it spells God is abled. So what's your disability? Do you look yourself in the mirror and you beat yourself up for how you look? Stop it. 
you look at your goals and you just think you're never going to be satisfied. Have real intimacy. I don't care if you speak in tongues. I don't care how long you pray. It's about you having a real relationship with Jesus. Because if I don't have a real urge or desire to reach that book, I'll never get there. Ever. The book's not going to come to me. <whistles> Here, boy. Right? Don't give up. Sometimes you fall down and you can't get up. I'll show you. I'm going to jump off the table and do a backflip and land on the stage. Ready? Are you guys not ready? <laughs> Here we go. No, seriously, you ready? You might want to get your cameras out or not. It's up to you. Here we go. Ready? Okay. Okay, good. Ready? Yeah. Good. Ready? <laughs> girls, are you ready? Some girls are ready. All right. <laughs> All right. Boys, are you ready? Yeah. yeah. Here we go. Ready? One, two, three. I'm joking, man. Are you serious? <laughs> if I did that, I'd break my arm or something, all right? <laughs> but what if I fall down? What if I literally fall down and I can't get back up? If I fail a hundred times, am I a failure? If I fail a hundred times, am I a failure? Yes or no? Then why do you sometimes think that you're a failure? The only way to move forward in a relationship with Jesus, it starts with prayer. You're not my friend because I don't know your name. I don't have your number. You and I, we don't tweet, blah, blah, blah. Right? Do you have my number? Do I have your number? Can you, can you say that we're friends? I don't even know your name, right? BP. <laughs> I mean, we tweet every day. Okay, no, we don't, but. But I know his name. My best friends are the ones that I talk to more. Does that make sense? God is real. And I want to share with you this one last story to understand that he is real. He's, getting, he's, he's ready to get real with you. Not in a judgmental way. I was in India. And I don't know if you believe in God or not. The first question is, do you have hope? Do you really have hope? Does your existence have purpose? Is it just to be good? Is it just to be generous? Or is there a life after death? Someone came up to me and said, well, reincarnation, you've obviously been punished for what you did in your last life. I said, thank you very much. She said, but don't worry, you're going to come back like a butterfly. I said, woman, you don't know how many butterflies I've killed in my wheelchair. I do not want to come back like a butterfly. <laughs> if there is no purpose and no meaning in existence, this life sucks. But to see a 10-foot, 5 10 foot tall, 5 foot wide demon come to the wall of my hotel room in San Francisco and to see miracles like I've shared with you there's got to be more I know it's more because I've seen it but if you don't believe in more than physics and science go to Africa and go meet a couple witch doctors and they'll tell you some freaky stuff that science can't explain so it's got to be there but then if there's purpose and existence, well, then there's got to be hope. But if there is hope, then it better work for everyone, including these girls in India that I met, who were all actually sold into slavery. Some of them at 10 years old by their parents for 700 US dollars. 
If you were the speaker in front of these 650 sex slaves who were now 17 years old, who some of them were sold by their parents, what would you tell them that hope is? Be good and good will come? No, I talked to them about Jesus and the cross and the devil's days are numbered and healing. And these girls went through rehab. They found Jesus. They save up money, not for a car, not for a house, but they go back to the brothels and pay off another girl's debt, get them through school, get them through college or whatever they want to do, find a job, and then they together get 700 bucks together and they go back to save another girl. And every time they go back, they go by their pimps and madams who used to abuse them and mistreat them as their slaves and say, we love you with the love of the Lord and we're praying for you and we're praying that you come to heaven one day. Talk about a miracle. You can't really do that. You can't forgive someone truly for someone to rape your daughter until you found a forgiveness that's in Jesus. For real. But here's the story real quick. I went to a brothel house and a woman was on the ground. She couldn't walk for four and a half years. I didn't know who she was. I told her about Jesus and we prayed for her because I was challenged. Her sister said, stop talking about Jesus and show me him. Make her walk. We prayed. She walked right there and then. And guess what happened? They went to the Indian gods on the wall and said, thank you, thank you, thank you. I said, no, 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 no. Haven't you been praying to them for four years? I said, your gods are dead. Why do I know they're dead? Because no one else resurrected. I said, this was Jesus. Why do I share with you this story? Listen carefully. I share this story with you because I did not know who that old woman was. That 10 acre brothel red light district in Mumbai, India was started by this woman 45 years ago. She was the madame of the madame of the madams. And God still healed her. What can God not heal? What can God not forgive and clean your slate so that when you worship you're not thinking about your sin and your guilt because he's not thinking about it. Right now if you know that you need to make your life right with Jesus because you do not have a real relationship with him in a moment, I'm going to get you to stand. But do not stand for any other reason than for the conviction in your heart today that you need to get a real relationship with Jesus so you can inherit the sweetest things that you can't even hold in both hands. If that's you, Stand to your feet right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I'm going to wait because we're not even halfway. If you can't stand up for your faith in this moment, in this venue here, how do you expect to stand up for your faith out there? So get up on your feet. You're only standing if you have a real relationship with Jesus. I mean, so you're only standing if, if you know you need to make your life right with Jesus and have a real commitment. BP, I know you're good. <laughs> Bow your heads, repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today and I thank you for your love, for your plan for my life. Give me faith to know you're with me. Teach me, lead me, guide me, and heal me each day. 
In Jesus' name, I pray. I pray, Lord God, you forgive me of all of my sins. I am so sorry that I failed you. Heal me, complete me, comfort me, fill me with your Holy Spirit. I want to live for you. Fill me with your love and your peace every day of my life. Give me a hunger for you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Before you go, um, just sit down just for a sec, okay? Thank you, Nick. Uh, I'm going to dismiss you. Uh, Nick, thank you. Uh, there are a lot of, several pastors came today just to be here with us. If you're one of those guys, just stand up where you are. Um, okay. So there's a few of us here. But if you want to pray with somebody about what you just prayed about, or wished you would have prayed about, uh, we'll be here. So in the name of Christ, go in his peace. Trust in him. Amen.